In this video, I'm gonna show you how to improve your confidence and reduce anxiety when it comes to approaching women, even if you are inexperienced or a beginner. All right, so let's start with a study from Match.com. According to their survey, 48% of men have significant anxiety when it comes to approaching women. We're gonna destroy all of that anxiety today. Let's get started. Let's talk about the thoughts that occur when you want to approach. In my mind, they happen in three different stages. First, there's thoughts that happen before you approach, right? You see someone maybe in your class, at a bar, at work, at the gym, walking by you, and you start having thoughts, right? Then there are thoughts during the approach. You start approaching them, you also have thoughts, but these thoughts are different than before. Then there are thoughts after the approach. No matter what the result was or whatever happened, there are thoughts, right? Some of them may be insecurities, and I'm gonna show you how to overcome most of these today. So we have the before, the during, and the after. Some of the thoughts before the approach could be something like, I'm not sure where to start. I have a fear of being judged, being judged either by them or by others. Or you just have a fear of being rejected, right? In your bones, you can feel it. You just have this crippling fear of, what are they gonna think of me, right? You know that feeling. Most men have that feeling. Then there are thoughts during the approach. Fear of public humiliation. What are people gonna think? How am I gonna look in public? Maybe you feel like you're in danger. Maybe you feel like you can only talk about tech. Most of the men I work with, they're successful, they're socially awkward, and they work in tech. So they feel like their conversational skills is only limited to tech. This is incorrect, I'll show you why. But these are some of the thoughts that happen during the approach, okay? And then thoughts after the approach, emotionally you can't handle it, assuming you got rejected. Rejection isn't real, I'll tell you why in another video. You assume you're not good enough, again, you're afraid, are all eyes on me, okay? So again, these are some of the thoughts you probably have before, during, and after the approach, no matter if you connected with the person or did not connect with them, okay? If you're watching this, my guess is some of these may resonate with you. You feel like this, okay? So in today's video, we're gonna focus mainly on the thoughts before you approach and the thoughts during the approach, okay? Because this tends to be the bulk of the problem for many men. The reality is that what's stopping you, what's preventing you from improving your social skills, your confidence, reducing the stress, reducing the anxiety, is rejection. You know this, I know this. Most men don't approach because of three reasons. Rejection, lack of confidence, or negative experiences. In today's video, we're just gonna focus on the rejection aspect, okay? But your fear of rejection isn't the problem. You see, you are fearing the wrong things. What you should fear are your missed opportunities, your missed golden opportunities when you see someone that you wanna to talk to but you don't take action. That's what you should regret because they could be the one. They could be somebody that you have great compatibility with. Personally, I'm really big on trying to reduce the number of what ifs in my mind and I encourage you to do the same. Don't or what I wanna say is you should limit the number of what ifs you have in your life. You don't wanna walk around, see an attractive girl in class or at a social gathering and you don't take action and wonder, oh, I wonder what if. You wanna reduce those as much as possible. That will help you make progress. This is a fear spectrum, okay? Now right now, for many of you men, you probably put approaching women at a 10, right? You're really afraid. There's no shame. I used to feel this way too you're really afraid of striking up a conversation with someone you don't know and approaching them, right? The problem is your fear is misplaced because approaching women shouldn't be at a 10. And yes, I understand it comes with being rejected. That's why you have approaching women at a 10. But a death of a loved one should be at a 10, right? That's what you ultimately fear the most as a human being, I'm assuming whether it's your parents, your siblings, 
family, maybe even a close friend. And if we remember that this is what really needs to be at a 10, all of a sudden approaching women goes to a two or three. It goes low in comparison on the fear spectrum. Why? Because it's nothing in comparison to the passing of someone that you love, right? So tip number one is to rethink rejection. When you recalibrate, recalibrate it from something that you put on this pedestal of a 10 of fear and you remember that really in comparison to the things that we deal with in life as a human being, this is nothing. This is nothing in comparison, okay? That's tip number one. Now I wanna show you the thoughts that may occur in five different stages when you see an attractive girl you wanna talk to, what your current thoughts are, and what you should replace them with. What you should replace your overthinking thoughts, your anxious thoughts, and the confident thoughts you should be having instead. So maybe you see someone you were attracted to and you think, I can't do this. That's the thought that comes in your mind. Instead, I want you to think, my time on this planet is limited. It's finite. I'm going to die one day. That'll help progress you from stage one to stage two. Follow along. Now at stage two, you may think, am I good enough, right? Self-doubt starts kicking in. Maybe you're inexperienced. Maybe you are shy. Maybe you've never done this before. I want you to think, well, what is good? Because good is subjective. Some women may find nerdy men really unattractive. There's another population of women that may find nerdy men very attractive, right? Use the analogy of ice cream. I love, love chocolate ice cream. Some people hate chocolate. So good is subjective. I want you to remember that. Number three, this is where judgment starts to kick in. She looks stuck up. Now you start making excuses about not taking action. You know who you are. You know you do this a lot. I want you to think, well, how do I know this to be true? How do I know she's stuck up? Is there evidence to support my beliefs? Like what reasoning do I have to support my theory that she's stuck up? This leads me to tip number two, which is fact versus feeling. During the approach, you're going to have these thoughts. They are inevitable. I want you to question and challenge them by asking, is this a fact or is this a feeling? And 99.99999% of the time, your thoughts are feeling based. She looks stuck up. She looks arrogant. She looks like she has a boyfriend. She looks like she doesn't want to be bothered. She looks busy. She looks like she's studying. You're just making shit up, dude. You're making shit up, okay? Nothing that I said right now is fact, unless maybe she had a boyfriend that was sitting right next to her. But even then, you don't even know if that's her boyfriend unless they kissed or something, right? So you get my point. Let's continue along. So now you're at stage four. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I want you to think, well, women love authentic men. I can use this towards my advantage. Right? In a world of Instagram filters and fake people, authenticity is hot. It's attractive. Okay. I don't know what to say. So now you're at stage five, you're about to talk and you're thinking, I don't know what to say. This girl's hot, <laughs> right? You're overwhelmed. You're anxious. You're nervous. You don't even know what to say. Just say this. Hello. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm really nervous right now, but I had to say, I had to come say hi because you are really stunning. Simple, easy, light, right? Nothing fancy. We're being direct. We're being honest. These count for something. And you notice I put a laugh in brackets because it's okay to laugh at yourself. It's okay. If anything, you're more attractive. This is a quote by psychologist David, and I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, Ross Marin, I, I'm assuming. He works at, he's a psychologist at Harvard, and he said in regards to anxiety, we need to expect that we will feel anxious at times. In fact, the more productive and successful we are, the more we need to expect to feel off kilter. I'll add that when we feel anxious, it's unhelpful to fight it. That makes it worse. It's unhelpful to fight it. That makes it worse. What is my point here? 
we want to use the nervousness, the anxiousness to our advantage as much as possible. Again, going back to this, hey, I got to say, I saw you from afar and I have to just come say, hi, I'm really nervous right now. I don't really do this often, but you're beautiful. How you doing? Just like that. Simple, calm, honest, using your anxiousness to your advantage because that is authentic. Okay. These are the three tips. If you found this video helpful and want to take it to the next level, check out the link in my bio for a two page framework on how to start conversations comfortably with women and strangers. It's only two pages, but I guarantee you that if you immerse yourself in that knowledge, it can change your life. Definitely changed mine. It definitely changed mine. <laughs> also, if you have a problem maybe going from small talk to big talk, so maybe your struggle is more with, I'm stuck in the small talk world, I don't know how to like have deeper conversations, check out this video, all right, where I'm gonna walk you through a flow chart on exactly how to do that. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, take care. Bye-bye.